Hi everyone, I'm Gina Kay, here with another card making video featuring the brand new Bold and Blooming Stamp TV Kit. Today I'm going to show you a technique called partial embossing, and let me show you the tools and products you need to make this card. I'm going to be using some ink cubes, and the colors I'm using are the Gina Kay Designs Wild Dandelion, Sweet Mango, and Red Velvet. I'm also going to be using the Black Onyx Pad. I've got a few assorted Tombow markers, and I'll let you know the color numbers I'm going to use as I'm working on this project. Then I'm going to be using the stamp set from the Bold and Blooming kit, and this stamp set is called Bold and Blooming. I'm also going to be using some of the Bold and Blooming dies. For cardstock, I've got some Wild Dandelion, Fresh Asparagus, Black Onyx, and some white. Then I'm going to be using a Darius embossing folder, and this is called Wire Fence, this particular pattern, but you can use any embossing folder you have. I've got a little bit of tape, and I've got my Misty stamping tool along with a score buddy and a cuddle bug. So to begin, I'm going to put this piece of cardstock into my mini Misty, and I'm just going to hold it into place here. And I'm going to grab one of the greetings from the Bold and Blooming set. I'm choosing the Happy Birthday to You greeting, and I'm going to put that into position and then pick it up using the door of the Misty. And this is the mini Misty, by the way. Uh, if you have the original, that's just great. I just grabbed my mini. I have both, and I love them both, so I use them for different things at different times. So here I'm going to ink up this particular stamp with some black onyx ink. Make sure that's nice and inky. And then I'm going to stamp my greeting right here along the bottom. There we go. And there I have my greeting. Now my next step, let me get rid of this stamp here, and I'll just wipe that ink away because I don't have a paper towel. <laughs> and I'm going to put the Misty away for a bit. My next step is going to be to grab this embossing folder, and I'm going to grab my cuddle bug. Now you can use any embossing machine that you have. If you've got a big shot, it'll work, a little sister, an evolution, whatever you have, it'll work great. I'm going to start with an A and a B plate. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my panel and I'm going to line it up inside this embossing folder. Now I want to make sure that I leave enough room for the greeting to show. And I'm going to place that right here like that. So you can see I've got plenty of room for my greeting at the bottom, so that area will not be embossed, and then I've lined that up. Now if it's a swirly pattern or something like that, you don't have to be quite as precise, but if it's a very organized pattern like this one, you do kind of want to make sure it's fairly even on both sides and straight. So I'm using a little bit of painter's tape just to hold that down to my plate. Now my next step is to choose a point on this particular piece of cardstock where I want my embossing to be. If I put my plate completely on top, it's going to emboss all of it down to this line. But I only want to do partial embossing, so I'm going to choose a spot right about there, and I'm going to send that through the machine. Now if you're a little bit nervous about that, and you don't think it's going to stay straight, you can take some pieces of painter's tape, and you can kind of you know, tack that down a little bit just to make sure it stays a little straighter. But you can see I'm only going to be embossing this much of the card because that's where that plate is going to stop putting pressure. All right, so here we go. It's going to go through the machine. There we go. And I can rip that off. Pull the tape away. And you'll see now I just have embossing in this little area. You can see it kind of fades out up there and it's, you know, it's finished off down here, but it kind of fades out. So what you want to do is you want to finish that off and make that look a little bit sharper up there. So grab a scoring tool. I'm going to use my um, embossing buddy for this. You can use any scoring tool you have. And I'm going to find that line where it starts to fade off, and I'm going to put that up against one of the lines on the score buddy, and I'm going to add a score line to kind of finish that off. Like that. 
And then I might move it down just a little bit so I can get my tool right in there and really put a deep line in. So now you can see that finishes that off nicely. I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom to make it even. So I'm just picking any line as long as it's right up along the edge there of my design. And I'll score that one also. Let me move it down so I can get a deeper score line, get my tool in the groove. Okay, so now I've got a nice finished area. And then to really dress it up, I'm going to add an additional score line next to the first score line. So I'm going to position my first score line into one of the grooves that has a tiny one-eighth of an inch next to it. So we'll just do that one again for good measure and do another one right there. So you can see how that looks with the two score lines. And again, sometimes I like to just move it down a little bit so I can drop the tool into the groove and get a deeper score line. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just redo that one for good measure and do the one next to it. And then slip it down just a little bit, keep it lined up, drop my tool in the groove line, and then I can get a stronger impression. So that finishes that off nicely, and that's a way to make a nice embossed border on your card. I'll show you a couple other ones I did. I did this one using a swirly pattern, and so the same kind of thing with a swirl, and that doesn't need to be quite as, um, you don't have to be quite as lined up for that one. It doesn't matter where the swirls are. For this one, I added a second embossing folder at the top, so I did the same exact thing again. I did this part, and then I flipped it around, and I did this part, and I added three score lines just to really dress it up. Okay, so the next part of my card is going to be to stamp some of the flowers. So let me grab the Misty again, and I'm going to grab just a plain piece of white cardstock. I should have a smaller one here laying around. Well, actually, I don't, so I'm just going to tear this because I don't have a paper cutter here. But that's okay, you guys will get the idea. All right, I'm going to lay this in place right here on my Misty. Okay. And then I'm going to use this big flower first. So I want to show you what I've done here. These flowers are very freeform. They're not, all the petals are not the same. So when we designed the dies for them, the obviously, you know, you have to have this positioned the right way. And so every time I would stamp this, I would be kind of turning the die, trying to find the right position. So what I did was I figured out the right position between the die and the stamp, and I took a Sharpie, it's getting caught on my magnet, I took a Sharpie and I put a dot at the top of the flower and a dot at the same spot on the top of the die. This way, I know if I stamp my flower straight, it'll be real easy to just drop the die on there and cut it out. So that's just a quick little tip. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this flower first. And I'm going to stamp this flower using some of the Wild Dandelion ink. So I have the cube here, and I'm going to ink that all up real well. And then I'm going to stamp that like that. Get that back in position. Now I'm going to grab a darker yellow. I'm going to use the 946 Tombow marker and I'm going to add a little bit of color on the second set of petals inside that flower. I'm just coloring that right on. These are water-based markers. If you don't have Tombows, you can use any water-based markers. You can use your Zig Clean colors, you can use Stampin' Up markers, uh, Marvy markers, even Crayola markers, markers will work the water-based kind. And then I'm going to stamp that on top of the flower and just add that darker color onto those parts of the flower. See what that looks like? Isn't that fun? Then I'm going to grab this orange marker. This is 905. And I'm going to color the swirly part in the center here. 
and I'm going to add that on top. And this gives these flowers a real kind of boho, batik look, very watercolory, multicolored images. Isn't that fun? So let's do another one. I'm going to do the next flower right here. Let me find my dot so I know it's straight. Because you can see now when I lay that right on there, that's going to line up perfectly and that's the right spot to cut. So that makes it very easy. You don't have to fool around with trying to line it up. Okay. So I'm going to grab that flower. And then this one I'm going to ink up with some sweet mango ink. Make this a fun, bright card. And stamp that. And sweet mango. Then for those petals, I'm going to use this reddish color. It's really a really vibrant tomato-y orange, and this is marker number 885. Do the same thing again. Color on those petals. And of course, you know, when you use the reds, you're going to find you get a little staining on your stamps. Same with when you use black ink. Um, good quality photopolymer stamps are supposed to stain. They're supposed to grab the ink. They're not the silicone kind where they repel the ink, because that's what silicone is supposed to do. When you kind of use silicone in your bathroom along the um, sides of your tubs and your sinks and stuff, it's supposed to repel water and, and liquid. You don't want your stamps to repel liquid. You want them to absorb it a little bit so it can kind of grab that dye. All right, and there we go. Isn't that fun? And then I'm going to use the brown ink, the Tombow ink, which is number 977. And I'm going to color that right in the swirl. And I'm going to add that right into the center, like that. So there I have some fun multicolored designs. My last flower I'm going to stamp in just a plain color. I'm going to do this one in red velvet and then I'm going to color parts of it in. Let me get that lined up right because I want that to be straight. All right. So this one's going to be in red velvet. Just a nice solid color. And I'll stamp that one. Still like to use the mist even though I'm not going to double stamp it, um, just in case it doesn't get a good impression the first time. Okay, and for this one I'm going to take that yellow marker 025 and I'm just going to color in these little parts here just to make that one multicolor too. Alright, so now my flowers are all stamped and it's time to cut them out using my cuddle bug and the dies that came with the kit. All right, so grabbing that, and I'm going to need an A and a B plate, and this time a C plate. So you can see these should line up if I've done this correctly. And I could lay them all out at once, but I tend to shift things around. I like to focus on one piece at a time, so if I don't have any washi tape close by to tape them down, then I like to do them one at a time. So there's one. Here's the next one. Those dots really do make a difference. Save you all kinds of time. Especially if you're mass producing too, it's nice to just be able to drop the die and cut. There's the second one. And here is the last one. I usually do a little bit better when I'm hovering above. So hopefully this is nice and straight. Okay. Here is my final flower. So there's the three flowers that I'm going to add to my card. Now I'm using a couple other dies with this card and I want to just show you what I'm using. You don't have to watch me cut out all these pieces, but the dies that I'm going to use for this card 
are also this brand new leaf die that we have at Gina K Designs. And it's just a cute, single little inexpensive die, but it's fun to add to any card project that you have flowers and you want to do some mixed um, types of leaves. So this is a new die for us. And you can do the, use this die one of two ways. You can cut it and all the little pieces will come out like this, or you can cut it and leave the little pieces in and then it looks all embossed with the little scroll line. So it's a lot of fun to use. And then I'm going to adhere this piece onto a piece of black onyx cardstock. So we'll do that first. Turn my tape around. Boy, this is sticky tape. So put that on there. And then the whole panel will go on to a piece of wild dandelion. Such a fun, bright springtime card. And now it's time to build the bouquet. So I did cut two of these out. And there's those two. And then I used the Cherry Lynn Designs Olive Branches die set. This is one piece and it'll cut a right and a left die, a uh, right and a left branch. And so I cut a couple of different ones here that I'm going to use as well. Now, if you don't have these dies, there are leaves in the stamp set and dies for those leaves, and you can use the ones that come in the stamp set. But I wanted to show you an alternative because sometimes that's fun. All right, so I'm gonna put my first flower on with a couple of foam squares. So let me put those on first. Get that out of there. And we'll put this one right here up at the top like that. Then I'm going, to, I'm going to tape one down flat onto the piece of white cardstock. I'll just use a little bit of tape there so I can kind of scoot under there with some foliage. And then I'm going to just put one foam square on the back of this one and place this one right about here. Then I'm going to add a little bit of tape on this leaf and slide that up under there. And if you want, you can always go back and add a little bit more tape if you want to tack it down, just like that, and then tack it down. I'm going to do the same thing over here, kind of slide that in there. Building little bouquets is fun. I'll tape that ahead of time there. Stick that in. And then I'm going to put one here, like this. Now you can cut these out using some uh, sheets of the Thermo Web adhesive, or you can use the Stick It adhesive, and attach that to your cardstock before you cut, and then you can just peel and go. Or you can do what I just did and just take your time and put a little bit of um, adhesive on each of the leaves and then tack it down that way. And I think I'll add one up here like that. So I'll do the same thing, just a little bit on the stem and a little bit on the leaves going down. You can also use liquid glue. That works too. Or a quickie glue pen. Okay. And then that one's going to go right here, like that. And there is my finished card project. I also did one with the hello friend greeting, and I added an extra little sprig along the top going the other way. Those, those are two fun cards, bright and cheerful, perfect for the spring. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for more card projects, and thanks so much for watching.